Our study of circles is now continuing on, and we're adding one new word for you, and that's secant. Secant is another one of our trig functions, just like tangent, sine, and cosine. We have another one called secant, and we also have angle measures, which we've talked about quite a bit already. Let's talk about what a secant is to start with. A secant line is simply a line which crosses through the circle at two points. You notice it's very different than a tangent line. A tangent line touches the circle once and only once. A secant line touches the circle twice every time. We have a formula. If we have an, two secant lines that cross through a circle, you'll notice that they create two arcs. We have arc AD and arc BC. What we can actually do is we can add those two arcs together, divide by 2, and that will give us the measurement of angle 1. The interior angle, angle 1, is created by averaging the two arcs when they're created by secant lines. So we are averaging BC plus AD divided by 2 gives us angle 1. We have another one where we have a secant line which touches a tangent line or goes through the point of tangency. That's what the red dot is. I just made bigger and blue. That is called the point of tangency. Both of these relationships, we have a major arc which goes around the circle in this direction and we have a minor arc which goes in this direction. They both have the same relationship. The angle in this case, angle 1 is equal to one half of the major arc, and on the other side, angle 2 is equal to one half of the minor arc from B to C. There's the relationship. When we have a tangent and a secant combining at the point of tangency, the relationship is that they are one half of the arc. The angles will be one half of the arcs. Here now we have what looks to be like tangent lines. It looks very similar to what we studied in the previous section, but now you'll notice it's actually two secant lines which meet at an endpoint outside the circle. In the last chapter, we actually learned about two tangent lines that meet outside the circle. Now we have two secant lines that meet outside the circle. So we have two lines which both go through the circle and touch the circle at two points. So they're secant lines. The relationship here is you take the larger arc minus the smaller arc and divide it by two. That's very different than if we look back here at this situation where both of the secants were inside of the circle. We actually added them together and then divided by two. In this case, both of the secant lines touch outside the circle. They don't make that X inside the circle. So in this case, what we do is we subtract them and divide by 2. Now we have a tangent line and a secant line. But again, I'm going to jump back. Notice here we had a tangent and secant, but they touched right there at the point of tangency. These do not they're meeting way outside the circle over here. So the secant line and the tangent line are touching away from the circle. In this case, we take, just like we did on the last part when we had two secant lines meeting outside the circle, we take the larger or the major arc, subtract the smaller arc, and divide by two. So in both cases, when the secant lines meet outside the circle, or when the tangent lines meet outside the circle, we're going to subtract and divide by 2. Our last one is we have two tangent lines meet outside the circle. And again, we take the larger arc or the major arc, subtract the smaller or minor arc, and divide by 2. In all three cases, it's we, if we have two secant, a secant and a tangent, or two tangent lines, we take the larger arc, subtract the smaller arc, and divide by 2 to find the angle. That is true whenever the endpoint is outside of the circle.
But we have six formulas there on what we can do with the angles of a triangle. All of them have to do with our angles. Here's our picture. We have find the measurements of angles 1 and 2. The first thing we have to figure out, is it outside or is it inside? This one's inside. Since it's inside, angle 1 will equal 88 plus 76 divided by 2. Remember, when it's inside the circle, you add them together and divide by 2. So you'll get 164 divided by 2, which is 82. Oops, excuse me. So angle 1 is 82 degrees. Now when we started learning earlier on this year, we learned about linear pairs and we said they're going to be vital as we continue our study in geometry. Well you'll notice here they come again. Angle 1 and angle 2 are a linear pair. That means angle 1 and angle 2 need to met, uh, add up to 180 degrees. So if you take 180 minus 82, you're going to get the measurement of angle 2, which is 98 degrees. So here we have the two secant lines that cross inside the circle. Next we have a secant and a tangent. Well, let's do some measurements here. First, angle 1 is going to be half of the arc that I just traced in blue. But you need to be careful because sometimes they give you pieces of the arc and not the whole arc. In this case, they give you from B to A is 142, and then from A to C is 92. That gives us a total of 234. If we half that, 234 divided by 2, you're going to get 117. So the measurement of the major arc, B to A to C, is 234. That means angle 1 is equal to 1 half of 234, or 117 degrees. Now there's a couple of different ways to go about finding angle 2, but the easiest way is going to be to remember that angle 1 and angle 2 form a linear pair. That means angle 1 and 2 need to equal 180, which means angle 2 must be 63 degrees. Here we have two secant lines that meet outside the circle. If you remember, so the way we do this is large arc minus small arc divided by 2 equals the angle. Well, our large arc is 141. Our small arc is x. Together, they're going to equal 60. This one's a little bit tricky because you can't just do a simple calculation. You have to do a little bit of algebra to solve. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 2, and I'll get 141 minus x equals 124. Now I'm going to move the 141 over and I'll get negative x equals negative 17, or dividing by negative 1, x equals 17. Now we can test this. If we take 17 plus 141, then divide that by 2, we should get our angle. Is that right? So the test would be 141 minus 17, which is what x now is, divided by 2. And we can see that that indeed gets us 62 degrees.
Our last question here has two tangent lines. This one's a little bit tricky, so make sure that you take very good notes on this question because it will come up in the future. The key that you need to remember is that a circle is 360 degrees. I have no idea how I'm going to do this. I know that I'm going to take the large arc minus the small arc, divide it by 2, and I'm going to get 40. But I don't know anything about the large arc or the small arc. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say the small arc is x. Well, if I knew that the small arc was x, what does that mean the big arc has to be? Well, the key is to remember that a circle is 360 degrees. That means if I take 360 minus x, I'm going to get the measurement of the large arc. The small arc from b to a is x. That means what's remainder, what the remainder is, is the entire circle, which is 360, subtracted off the piece we used for the small arc. We can now put that into our formula. 360 minus x minus x divided by 2 equals 40. We're going to solve this like we just did in the last one. Multiply both sides by a 2. And we get 360 minus 2x equals 80. Minus the 360. And you'll get negative 2x equals negative 280. Divide by negative 2, and you'll get x equals 140 degrees. That means the small arc is 140 degrees. If we needed the large arc, we would simply take 360 minus 140, and we would get 220 for the large arc. That example is going to be very, very, very useful, for make, so make sure you have good notes on how to do that one.